Hello everybody and welcome to Tarrant Moncton in Dorset. Now, rather oddly, I thought I'll look on the map to see where there is a Ford. So I've got some Gore-Tex shoes, the Pegasus Trail 3 Gore-Tex shoes. I thought what a better way to test the shoes than actually standing in some water. So later on, I think I'll test these by running through them. But first of all, let's take a look at the shoe. And also compare them to the Pegasus Trail 2 Gore-Tex that I got last year. So on the left is the Pegasus Trail 2 GTX or Gore-Tex, never quite sure which is the official title. Gore-Tex is obviously the material that they've even put on the shoe here. And this black one here is the third edition. And I thought actually a black shoe was really ideal for a Gore-Tex shoe because really the idea is to take these through mud in the winter. And although the yellow one's very nice, it does get rather dirty and you always think that you need to be cleaning it. If we start from the back of the shoe, they're both actually the identical outsoles. If I home in there on the actual serial number, you can see that they're actually, in fact, exactly the same. So as in the second edition, we've got a full Nike React midsole, and it looks to be pretty much an identical stack height. I'll put the stats up on the stack height. If we look at the rear of the shoe, it's quite similar. You've got the gaiter on both. It's slightly different there with the pull tab. It's a bit less this year. I never quite see the point of pull tabs, but if you're going to have one, you may as well make it slightly less. It seemed a bit over excessive last year. Otherwise, slightly different there on the heel cup, but they're both pretty firm feel heel cups. And the styling at the bottom of the shoe there are identical. One difference I have noticed so far on foot is that the lockdown on the third version is better. You just The tongue is just slightly more padded uh, compared to last year. And the, these buckles here allow you to get your foot just about a bit um, tighter. And it's quite a wide shoe, in fact. So for me, as somebody with a narrow foot, I find that quite welcome. And at the front of the shoe, just a bit more reinforcement around the toe box there compared to last year but the same Gore-Tex material all around. So let's just put one of each shoe on and just show how they compare. So here they are on foot. The black one is the third version and the yellow one is the second version. And you can see tell with my narrow foot how much closer I can get the tongues together on this one. And where compared to this one, and they're much wider, I feel much looser. So that's definitely a good benefit. I do feel that both shoes are actually are quite sort of wide. I don't think the actual width of them has changed at all. And then perhaps if you've got a narrow foot, it's not the most ideal of shoes, but certainly I feel I can wear a thicker sock with this one. I always normally wear thin socks, but this one perhaps has opportunities when it really is cold in the winter to put something a bit thicker on. Okay, so we've seen a horse go through the Ford, so perhaps it's now my turn. So let's see how I can go with these Gore-Tex shoes on. Right, I think first of all, I'll try just walking through, then maybe I'll try a bit of running. So feet completely dry at the moment, which is a good sign. Let's just stand in the Ford, see how long I can last. Okay, all good so far. Let's see if I can find a bit of a deeper part. Let's see if I hold on to this post here and see how far I can actually get. Oh, <laughs> my feet has disappeared. <laughs> So I completely submerged my foot there and it sort of feels a bit wet now. I think I just came over the top of the shoe, but certainly that seems an unlikely scenario. I mean, if you do put your foot in a big sort of water about six inches deep, you're bound to get wet. I guess the problem is, is will the water then escape? So let's do a few little runs through to see how I get on. So not too bad through there. I certainly think they're waterproof as long as you don't completely submerge your foot. 
and uh, I can't feel, sort of feel any water inside. It did feel like I slightly got my socks wet when I put my foot right under the water there on the edge of the water here. But uh, I think that's inevitable because it's obviously not completely covering your sock. So even that small little gaiter is not going to completely keep you covered. But I think for sort of mud splashes and stuff and little, uh, little crossings like that would be great. In terms of the actual feel of the shoe, well it's quite a heavy shoe, weighing 396 grams in my UK 13, so it's certainly not a racing shoe, but, and you can sort of feel that sort of heaviness. When I went across a ploughed field on my first run, you could sort of feel the sort of sinking feeling, but I think you've got to accept the fact that this is a shoe designed to keep you nice and comfy in the winter, not necessarily one for your fastest runs, but I think I'm looking forward to taking it out of some old railways in the winter when they traditionally have been rather muddy, and like normal shoes would be, you get your feet wet straight away, even in trail shoes. I mean, the problem with trail shoes mostly is that they aren't really designed for British winters. They're designed for seemingly rocky American terrain where it's bone dry and you're just looking to avoid sort of rocks and stuff. But a trail shoe for me is what is actually a shoe that I can take out on a muddy path and uh, have a reasonable time without feeling like you're ruining your shoes and get sodden feet on your first puddle. So I think hopefully these Gore-Tex shoes will be the answer. I didn't run in that much in the second version at the end. I think I did about 45 miles in them, uh, mainly because I think I sort of took them more to the roads. But I'm hoping that these ones, with a slightly better lockdown, I'll take out a bit more. And also being an all-black shoe, I'm not going to be so concerned about how they look each time because they're not going to sort of look completely dirty after the first puddle. Hello everybody, in the excitement of splashing through that forward, I forgot to give my scores that I normally do for the shoes now. So the first score is for fit, and I've given this 7 out of 10. That's pretty sort of an average score for me. I think the best score I've given recently is the Liberate Nitro at a 9. So the fact that the lockdown on this one has improved since the two, definitely, I can get that shoe a bit tighter. But equally, it's a reasonably wide shoe, so I think it's going to accommodate quite a wide range of foot types. And certainly, as most Nike shoes I find are, certainly finding fitting true to size. Next category is cushioning. And obviously, this is meant to be a trail shoe, so it's not really a shoe that is designed for your lot of road work. And I did do um, about a mile on the road in my first run the other day. It wasn't too bad actually. It's obviously not the most ideal shoe for the road, but it's not as bad as they say road to trail shoe. So I'll give it a six out of 10. I think the React is not too bad in this shoe. It doesn't feel quite as bad as it does in say the Pegasus or the Zoomfly 3 for me. I didn't bother to get the Pegasus 38 or Zoomfly 4s so I tried to put off with them. But the fact that you've got quite aggressive lugs on the back means that on the road it just feels a bit sort of firmish. So it's not the most plush of cushioning, but it's certainly good enough for a few miles on the road or if you, you're getting to the trail or if you find yourself having to deviate onto it during the course of a run. So for cushioning, I'm going to give it 6 out of 10. That sort of compares with sort of the maximum score I gave to the Invincible 10 out of 10, which obviously is a max cushion shoe. The next one is speed. I'm only giving this one 4 out of 10, which is one of the lowest scores I could give because I think this isn't really a shoe designed for sort of trail racing or for your fast efforts. I think this is designed a shoe for more comfort on the trails, keep your foot dry. And I think the non Gore Tex version is kind of a similar use case. It's not the Nike's sort of racing trail shoe. They don't really have them. They have the Terra Kaija, but I never, I got the Terra Kaija 5, but I never thought that was a particularly sort of fast shoe compared to the Eslab Pulsar. It was quite bold. Uh, maybe a shoe that's designed for sort of lo longer efforts but certainly yeah this one it's not going to be the shoe that I'd want to take out for my fast efforts you, I mean like any shoe you, you can run a fast in if you're a good runner and you can certainly do that in this one but you know there'll be other shoes that you can take out for your fastest days but at least this one would hopefully keep you dry doing so maximum score on speed I go to the next percent two at 10 out of 10 not really it's a perfect shoe but I think at the moment that's as good as any so I don't want to sort of mark down the, these scores unnecessarily. So for an overall score I'll give it 7 out of 10 which is pretty an average score at the moment. I think the best scores I've given recently to the Adios Pro 2 and X% 2 at 9 out of 10. It's obviously a fairly niche shoe in terms of it's a trail shoe designed for sort of a bit of comfort but also to keep your feet dry and warm during the winter. As you saw in the test there it did pretty well on that. I mean I had put the extreme test to put my foot right submerged into a 
sort of six inches of water completely covering my shoe. But I mean, is that really a situation you're going to counter running? It's not really the sort of thing that I'm probably wanting to do. I want to go swimming during a, during a run, but at least there it would tell. But I think the slight danger with that, if you get so wet that, that the, the, the water can get into the shoe and you might then feel like trapped. I mean, I suppose the answer then is to stop a bit and then shake it all out. And that has actually happened before. I remember once I was out in, in a... On a, on a run when it got so wet I was past caring the fact whether my feet was so wet or not was doesn't really matter because everything else was so wet that uh, it was bonded but I think it's more of those days when it's actually not raining but it's a bit wet underfoot and it's more like splashy splashy but the problem is like a normal shoe with just a normal upper that it's the first puddle you go through it will completely sodden them your feet socks will get um, wet straight away in the winter they're not really gonna dry off you're just going to get cold feet it'd be a bit miserable chances of blisters increasing so certainly i have found in the past that this is a shoe that really does a good job there and as i said in the video i'll be looking to take it out in the winter when uh, the conditions uh, justify it anyway so i hope you enjoyed this little look at the pegasus trail 3 gore-tex and uh, is it a shoe that you might be thinking about please let me know in, in the comments below please like and subscribe and all that and I look forward to seeing the next one then bye which are on the ram is but it doesn't seem to be there at the moment. Terrett Moncton is a sort of the archetypal sort of Dorset little village very much Thomas Hardy territory. I love the fact you've got these sort of crows in the background as you're trying to film it. <laughs> Usually you've got sort of uh, cars and all sorts. Right I think I'll get myself out for a little run in some road shoes now. Langton Arms behind us where I parked.